Hey, Nick Barzak with Full Compass. We are now in a demo room at Infocom. This is with Alan and Heath. I'm with Rob Clark. We have such an important product, by the way, the DLive series. And uh, there's some really cool developments with the DLives that you're here to talk about. The uh, 2.0 firmware, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's new. Uh, just launched this week and obviously new to the show. First time in, in sight. That's so cool. And first of all, this room is just so cool looking. These boards are cool. Like I love the, the lighting down. We just did a demo uh, at Full Compass with a couple of the you know different Allen and Heath series, but these lights coming down, everything just looks so cool on these boards. Um, so yeah, let's take us through this, uh, this software. I, I'm really interested in it. Okay, so uh, 2.0 firmware for DLive has been essentially four years in the making. A lot of research gone into it. Um, there's all sorts of cool features. There's cue list editors, there's actions. Uh, so you can have a single soft key, uh, invoke all sorts of uh, function changes, events, what we call actions. Sure. Uh, there's uh, cue list editing. Uh, there's MIDI, MIDI improvements around the queue list, be it from the surface or mix rack visibility there. And uh, there's uh, the direct uh, scene preview system. So there's loads in there and there's loads more. But the really cool thing that I want to talk about right now is the, the new Rack Ultra FX. Oh, wow. So uh, in, the, in the software, if you fit this card, uh, you get, ex you get an eight additional Rack Ultra FX that sit alongside the existing 16. Wow, and what kind of effects are we talking about? Well, let's have a look. Let's dive in. Yeah. Uh, so the fundamental effect is uh, the vocal shifter. So this is a stereo vocal shifter uh, doing obviously pitch and form and correction and modification. Um, very high resolution. And this really, all of the effects exploit FPGA and ARM processing on each one. Mm -hmm. So the system can, uh, can exploit the... Uh, Cool functions of ARM processing and FPGA on each in different ways on each effect. So here we've got great form and correction, really afforded by the ARM processor, and then the FPGA is there to improve latency issues and buffering and uh, assist along the way with the pitch shifting. Vocal tuner. This is a uh, top end auto correction vocal tuner built into the system. It can run off global key. It could run off the key could be driven by MIDI, and you can go in and control set up your key and then dive in and trigger off what, what's illegal or, or, or legal notes for your, for your singer, and then play around with the ballistics of the auto-tune correction. And then store them for song to song, change the keys. And everything's scene recallable as everything on DLive, so you can change the way this works, have different vocal tuners or different effects in different scenes. So moving on from the vocal tuner, you've got vocal gridder, which looks really similar, but it's actually quite a different algorithm. It's really critical here. The ARM processor is really driving very super fast pitch correction uh, or pitch detection to provide a very rapid yet smooth pitch gridder. I'm blown away by the amount of processing this takes to, to pull that off. Like, so these, each of these racks are kind of four times as powerful as the existing effects racks built into DLive. Wow. Uh, that's how powerful that card is that I showed you at the start. Just that one card has all of this and all of that processing capability. Absolutely. Um, then moving across, you've got a quad, quad version of that, so the quad voice harmonizer. So four voices, all with pitch and form and correction. Very similar in structure with the FPGA providing reverb, chorus, auto expansion, and time, time and pitch variation. There's also a MIDI version, a MIDI harmonizer, where you, you can have uh, four up to four voices of harmony driven from a MIDI input. So you could trigger the whole device, go into the back panel, um, trigger off whatever MIDI setup you want to use. But you could you could drive the thing from a MIDI input purely. And then if I find that for you, MIDI harmonizer. There you go. That's the MIDI harmonizer. So you can do you want to zoom in on that one. I mean, it's almost working like a like a, um, a key, keyboard's playing yeah. yeah vocal harmonies. Yeah, it's it's like a a, a vocoder that's that's with accurate. Absolutely. I mean, that's absolutely critical uh, for more complex key signatures, um, and you can run it in monophonic or polyphonic mode. Um, let's move across into saturation. So here you've got five models or modes of saturation with a drive and a pad button that enables you to run desensitize the harmonic drive so you can put it onto a mix bus if you wish yep or push the pad out and run it as a as on a channel as a saturator i love that it's a, like you know i'm coming from the world of like music production this is literally like having installing a new sample library or a new console yeah but for live engineering this is this is really cool absolutely um and then the amp and cab model uh, amp and cab simulation so you've got various uh, amplifier models um, bass amps, uh, guitar, classic guitar amps, and distortion uh, distortion devices, and you've got cabinet simulations, and of course none. You can turn the cabinet simulation off with a four-band EQ, and again the drive control 
uh, to create all sorts of amp and cab distortion, be it on vocal, gu uh, guitar or bass or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the all-important reverbs. The, of course. These units are four times more powerful than the old ones, as I said, and this has really afforded us the ability to create huge, dense, high-resolution reverbs that you only really find on top outboard kit yeah. or the finest plugins. So we've got a quick setup environment too where you can switch through uh, the tab systems to see um, your reflection. Uh, your, you can control your reflection models, uh, your echoes. You can position echoes with a finger. You can go in and play around with the diffusion, modulation, and texture and density of the reverb or go into all the m various amounts of EQ uh, arranged and positioned around the reverb algorithm. But I like just hanging out in the quick setup space and playing around with very quickly you're able to dial up um, uh, great sounding reverbs with a touch of a, a drop down. Wow, that is so cool. And then there's, last but not least, there is uh, a plate reverb. So there's uh, 11 models of plate reverb modeling the finest uh, physical plates, be it steel, etc. And this also models some of the classic plugins. So we're modeling plugins. Yeah. Uh, that's it. So. Uh, what a great environment. Thank you for, for taking time to, for me to show you these uh, these effects. Well, now this makes me want to buy all of this. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate you giving me this board, by the way. Um, uh, it's so nice to meet Thanks, you. And absolutely. You. For more questions or uh, solutions with live sound with Alan and Heath, go to fullcompass.com or call your sales rep. They know everything. They know a lot more than I do. But thank you so much for your Thanks, time. Nick. Thanks, yeah. Full Compass.